Genghis Khan, slash SKN slash or slash DSKN slash, Mongol, Tisksa, listen, C. 1162, the 18th of August 1227, born Tamujin, was the founder and great Khan, Emperor, of the Mongol Empire, which became the largest contiguous empire in history after his demise. He came to power by uniting many of the nomadic tribes of Northeast Asia. After founding the Mongol Empire and being proclaimed Genghis Khan, he started the Mongol invasions that resulted in the conquest of most of Eurasia. These included raids or invasions of the Karakatan Khanate, Caucasus, Quismid Empire, Western Xia and Jin dynasties. These campaigns were often accompanied by wholesale massacres of the civilian populations, especially in the Quismian and Xia controlled lands. By the end of his life, the Mongol Empire occupied a substantial portion of Central Asia and China. Before Genghis Khan died, he assigned a Jedi Khan as his successor and split his empire into Khanates among his sons and grandsons. He died in 1227 after defeating the Western Xia. He was buried in an unmarked grave somewhere in Mongolia at an unknown location. His descendants extended the Mongol Empire across most of Eurasia by conquering or creating vassal states out of all of modern-day China, Korea, the Caucasus, Central Asia and substantial portions of modern Eastern Europe, Russia, and Southwest Asia. Many of these invasions repeated the earlier large-scale slaughters of local populations. As a result Genghis Khan and his empire have a fearsome reputation in local histories. Beyond his military accomplishments, Genghis Khan also advanced the Mongol Empire in other ways. He decreed the adoption of the Uyghur script as the Mongol Empire's writing system. He also practiced meritocracy and encouraged religious tolerance in the Mongol Empire while unifying the nomadic tribes of Northeast Asia. Present-day Mongolians regard him as the founding father of Mongolia. Condemned throughout most of history for the brutality of his campaigns. Genghis Khan is also credited with bringing the Silk Road under one cohesive political environment. This increased communication and trade from Northeast Asia to Muslim Southwest Asia and Christian Europe, thus expanding the horizons of all three cultural areas. Temujin was related on his father's side to Kabul Khan, Ambaghai, and Hochula Khan who had headed the Karmag Mongol Confederation and were descendants of Bodon Chimunkag, c. 900. When the Jurchen Jin dynasty switched support from the Mongols to the Tatars in 1161, they destroyed Kabul Khan. Temujin's father, Yesergai, leader of the Borjigin clan and nephew to Ambaghai and Hochula Khan, emerged as the head of the ruling clan of the Mongols. This position was contested by the rival Taikad clan. Who descended directly from Mbaghai. When the Datas grew too powerful after 1161, the Jin switched their support from the Datas to the Kriyats. Birth Due to the lack of contemporary written records, scant factual information exists about the early life of Tamujin. The few sources that provide insight into this period often conflict. Tamujin was probably born in 1162 in Diluan Bulldog near Burk and Khaldun Mountain and the Onon and Kurlan rivers in modern-day northern Mongolia, not far from the current capital Ulaanbaatar. The secret history of the Mongols reports that Tamujin was born with a blood clot grasped in his fist, a traditional sign that he was destined to become a great leader. He was the second oldest son of his father Yesergai, a Karmag Mongols major chief of the Qed and an ally of Togrul Khan of the Korea tribe and the oldest son of his mother Holun. According to the secret history, Tamujin was named after a Tatar chieftain, Tamujin Yuj, whom his father had just captured. Yesukai's clan was called Borjigin, and Holun was from the Ilkhanat, the sublineage of the Kong Irad tribe. Like other tribes, they were nomads. Because his father was a chieftain, as were his predecessors, Tamujin was of a noble background. This higher social standing made it easier to solicit help from and eventually consolidate the other Mongol tribes. Early life and family Tamujin had three brothers named Hazar, Hakian, and Temurj, and one sister named Tamulan, as well as two half-brothers named Begta and Belgute. Like many of the nomads of Mongolia, Tamujin's early life was difficult. His father arranged a marriage for him 
and at nine years of age he was delivered by his further to the family of his future wife Borti, who was a member of the tribe Kong Irad. Temujin was to live there in service to Dai Setzen, the head of the new household, until he reached the marriageable age of twelve. While heading home, his father ran into the neighboring Tatars, who had long been enemies of the Mongols, and he was subsequently poisoned by the food they offered. Upon learning this, Temujin returned home to claim his father's position as chieftain of the tribe, however, his father's tribe refused to be led by a boy so young. They abandoned Holun and her children, leaving them without protection. For the next several years, Holun and her children lived in poverty, surviving primarily on wild fruits and ox carcasses, marmots, and other small game killed by Temujin and his brothers. Begta, Temujin's older half-brother, began to exercise the power of the eldest male in the family and eventually Temujin's mother Holun, not Begda's mother, would have to accept him as her husband if and when he became an adult. Temujin's resentment erupted during one hunting excursion that Temujin and his brother Kasa killed their half-brother Begda. In another incident, around 1177, he was captured in a raid and held prisoner by his father's former allies, the Taekad. The Taekad enslaved Temujin, reportedly with a kang, a sort of portable stocks, but with the help of a sympathetic guard, the father of Chilun, who later became a general of Genghis Khan. He was able to escape from the Gur, Yurt, in the middle of the night by hiding in a river crevice. Citation needed, it was around this time that Jalm and Bo Ochu, two of Genghis Khan's future generals, joined forces with him. Temujin's reputation also became widespread after his escape from the Taekyad. At this time, none of the tribal confederations of Mongolia were united politically, and arranged marriages were often used to solidify temporary alliances. Temujin grew up observing the tough political climate of Mongolia, which included tribal warfare, thievery, raids, corruption, and continual acts of revenge carried out between the various confederations all compounded by interference from foreign forces such as the Chinese dynasties to the south. Temujin's mother Holun taught him many lessons about the unstable political climate of Mongolia, especially the need for alliances. Marriage to Borti As previously arranged by his father, Temujin married Borti of the Ungarat tribe when he was around 16 in order to cement alliances between their respective tribes. Soon after Borti's marriage to Temujin, she was kidnapped by the markets and reportedly given away as a wife. Temujin rescued her with the help of his friend and future rival, Jamukha, and his protector, Togrul Khan of the Kriya tribe. She gave birth to a son, Jockey, 1185-1226, nine months later, clouding the issue of his parentage. Despite speculation over Jockey, Borti would be Temujin's only empress though he did follow tradition by taking several more Ganatic wives. Borti had three more sons, Shigatai, 1187, 1241, Ajidai, 1189, 1241, and Talui, 1190-1232. Genghis Khan also had many other children with his other wives but they were excluded from the succession. While the names of sons were documented, daughters were not. The names of at least six daughters are known, and while they played significant roles behind the scenes during his lifetime, no documents have survived that definitively provide the number or names of daughters born to the consorts of Genghis Khan. Uniting the Mongol confederations During the early 13th century the Central Asian plateau north of China was divided into several tribes or confederations, among them Naamans, Merkits, Tatars, Karmag Mongols, and Kriyids, that were all prominent in their own right and often unfriendly toward each other, as evidenced by random raids, revenge attacks, and plundering. Early attempts at power Temujin began his ascent to power by offering himself as an ally, or, according to other sources, a vassal. To his father's Zander, sworn brother or blood brother, Tugrul, who was Khan of the Kriyids, and is better known by the Chinese title Wang Khan, which the Jin Empire granted him in 1197. This relationship was first reinforced when Borti was captured by the Merkits. Temujin turned to Tugrul for support, and in response, 
Tugrul offered his vassal 20,000 of his great warriors and suggested that he also involve his childhood friend Jamukha, who had himself become Khan, ruler, of his own tribe, the Jadaran. Although the campaign was successful and led to the recapture of Borti and utter defeat of the Merkits, it also paved the way for the split between the childhood friends, Temujin and Jamukha. Temujin had become blood brother, and uh, with Jamukha earlier and they had vowed to remain eternally faithful. As Jamaka and Temujin drifted apart in their friendship, each began consolidating power, and soon became rivals. Jamaka supported the traditional Mongolian aristocracy, while Temujin followed a meritocratic method, and attracted a broader, though lower class, range of followers. Due to his earlier defeat of the Merkits, and a proclamation by the shaman Kokushu that the eternal blue sky had set aside the world for Temujin, Temujin began rising to power. In 1186, Temujin was elected Khan of the Mongols. However, Jamukha, threatened by Temujin's rapid ascent, quickly moved to stop Temujin's ambitions. In 1187, he launched an attack against his former friend with an army of 30,000 troops. Temujin hastily gathered together his followers to defend against the attack, but he was decisively beaten in the Battle of Dalan Baltzkert. Jamaka horrified people greatly and harmed his image by boiling 70 young male captives alive in cauldrons, alienating many of his potential followers and eliciting sympathy for Temujin. Tugrul, as Temujin's patron, was exiled to the Karakatan. The life of Temujin for the next ten years is very unclear, as historical records are mostly silent on that period. Return to power Around the year 1197, the Jin initiated an attack against their formal vassal, the Tatars, with help from the Kriyads and Mongols. Temujin commanded part of this force and following the subsequent victory he and Togrul were restored by the Jin to positions of power. The Jin bestowed Togrul with the honorable title of On Khan, and Temujin with a lesser title of Jorguri. The main opponents of the Mongol confederation, traditionally the Mongols, around 1200 were the Naamans to the west, the Merkits to the north, the Tangts to the south, and the Jin to the east. In his rule and his conquest of rival tribes, Temujin broke with Mongol tradition in a few crucial ways. He delegated authority based on merit and loyalty, rather than family ties. Jurchen inscription, 1196, in Mongolia relating to Genghis Khan's alliance with the Jin against the Tatars. As an incentive for absolute obedience and following his rule of law, the Yasa Code, Temujin promised civilians and soldiers wealth from future possible war spoils. As he defeated rival tribes, he did not drive away enemy soldiers and abandon the rest. Instead, he took the conquered tribe under his protection and integrated its members into his own tribe. He would even have his mother adopt orphans from the conquered tribe, bringing them into his family. These political innovations inspired great loyalty among the conquered people, making Temujin stronger with each victory. Rift with Tugrul Sengam, son of Tugrul, Wang Khan, was jealous of Temujin's growing power, and his affinity with his father. He allegedly planned to assassinate Temujin. Tugrul, though allegedly saved on multiple occasions by Temujin, gave in to his son and became uncooperative with Temujin. Temujin learned of Sengam's intentions and eventually defeated him and his loyalists. Genghis Khan and Tugrul Khan, illustration from a 15th century Jami al Tawarik manuscript. One of the later ruptures between Tugrul and Temujin was Tugrul's refusal to give his daughter in marriage to Joki, the eldest son of Temujin, a sign of disrespect in the Mongolian culture. This act led to the split between both factions and was a prelude to war. Tugrul allied himself with Jamukha, who already opposed Temujin's forces, however, the internal dispute between Togrul and Jamaka, plus the desertion of a number of their allies to Temujin, led to Togrul's defeat. Jamaka escaped during the conflict. This defeat was a catalyst for the fall and eventual dissolution of the Korea tribe. The next direct threat to Temujin was the Naimans, Naiman Mongols, with whom Jamaka and his followers took refuge. The Naimans did not surrender although enough sectors again voluntarily sided with Temujin. In 1201, Akairul Dai elected Jamukha as Gurkhan, universal ruler, 
a title used by the rulers of the Karakatan Khanate. Jamaka's assumption of this title was the final breach with Temujin, and Jamaka formed a coalition of tribes to oppose him. Before the conflict, however, several generals abandoned Jamaka, including Subutai, Jelm's well-known younger brother. After several battles, Jamaka was finally turned over to Temujin by his own men in 1206. According to the secret history, Temujin again offered his friendship to Jamaka, asking him to return to his side. Temujin had killed the men who betrayed Jamaka, stating that he did not want disloyal men in his army. Jamaka refused the offer of friendship and reunion, saying that there can only be one sun in the sky, and he asked for a noble death. The custom is to die without spilling blood, which is granted by breaking the back. Jamaka requested this form of death. Despite the fact that in the past Jamaka had been known to have boiled his opponent's generals alive, the part of the Merkit clan that sided with the Naamans were defeated by Subutai, who was by then a member of Temujin's personal guard and later became one of the most successful commanders of Genghis Khan. The Naamans' defeat left Temujin as the sole ruler of the Mongol plains. All the prominent confederations fell or united under his Mongol confederation. Accounts of Genghis Khan's life are marked by claims of a series of betrayals and conspiracies. These include rifts with his early allies such as Jamaka, who also wanted to be a ruler of Mongol tribes, and Wang Khan, his and his further's ally, his son Jockey, and problems with the most important shaman who was allegedly trying to drive a wedge between him and his loyal brother Kasa. His military strategies showed a deep interest in gathering good intelligence and understanding the motivations of his rivals, exemplified by his extensive spy network and yam root systems. He seemed to be a quick student, adopting new technologies and ideas that he encountered, such as siege warfare from the Chinese. He was also ruthless demonstrated by his tactic of measuring against the linchpin, used against the tribes led by Jamaka. As a result, by 1206 Temujin had managed to unite or subdue the Merkits, Naamans, Mongols, Creeds, Tatars, Uyghurs, and other disparate smaller tribes under his rule. It was a monumental feat for the Mongols, as they became known collectively. Adakaya ruled I, a council of Mongol chiefs. Temujin was acknowledged as Khan of the Consolidated Tribes and took the new title Genghis Khan. The title Khagan was not conferred on Genghis until after his death, when his son and successor, Ajidai, took the title for himself and extended it posthumously to his father, as he was also to be posthumously declared the founder of the Yuan dynasty. This unification of all confederations by Genghis Khan established peace between previously warring tribes and a single political and military force under Genghis Khan. Religion Genghis Khan was a Tengrist, but was religiously tolerant and interested in learning philosophical and moral lessons from other religions. He consulted Buddhist monks, Muslims, Christian missionaries, and the Taoist monk Kuchuji. Military campaigns during the 1206 political rise of Genghis Khan, the Mongol Empire created by Genghis Khan and his allies shared its western borders with the western Xia dynasty of the Tangts. To the east and south was the Jin dynasty, founded by the Manchurian Jurchens, who ruled northern China as well as being the traditional overlords of the Mongolian tribes for centuries. Battle between Mongol warriors and the Chinese. Genghis Khan organized his people, army, and his state to first prepare for war with Western Xia, or Zyxia, which was close to the Mongolian lands. He correctly believed that the more powerful young ruler of the Jin dynasty would not come to the aid of Zyxia. When the Tangts requested help from the Jin dynasty, they were refused. 25. Despite initial difficulties in capturing its well-defended cities, Genghis Khan managed to force the emperor of Zyxia to submit to vassal status. Jin Dynasty In 1211, after the conquest of Western Xia, Genghis Khan planned again to conquer the Jin Dynasty. The commander of the Jin Dynasty army made a tactical mistake in not attacking the Mongols at the first opportunity. Instead, the Jin commander sent a messenger, Mingtan, to the Mongol side who defected and told the Mongols that the Jin army was waiting on the other side of the pass. At this engagement fought at Badger Pass the Mongols massacred hundreds of thousands of Jin troops. In 1215 Genghis besieged, captured, 
and sacked the Jin capital of Zongdu, modern-day Beijing. This forced the Emperor Xuanzong to move his capital south to Kaifeng, abandoning the northern half of his kingdom to the Mongols. Between 1232 and 1233, Kaifeng fell to the Mongols under the reign of Genghis' third son, Ajidai Khan. The Jin dynasty collapsed in 1234, after the siege of Xut Karakit and Khanate Kuklug, the deposed Khan of the Naiman Confederation that Temujin defeated and folded into his Mongol Empire, fled west and usurped the Khanate of Karakitan, also known as the Western Liao, as it was originally established as remnants of the Liao dynasty. Genghis Khan decided to conquer the Karakitan Khanate and defeat Kuklug, possibly to take him out of power. By this time the Mongol army was exhausted from ten years of continuous campaigning in China against the Western Xia and Jin dynasty. Therefore Genghis sent only two Chumun, 20,000 soldiers, against Kuklug, under his younger general, G.E.B., known as the Arrow. With such a small force, the invading Mongols were forced to change strategies and resort to inciting internal revolt among Kuklug's supporters leaving the Karakatan Khanate more vulnerable to Mongol conquest. As a result, Kuklug's army was defeated west of Kashgar. Kuklug fled again, but was soon hunted down by Jibi's army and executed. By 1218, as a result of defeat of Karakatan Khanate, the Mongol Empire and its control extended as far west as Lake Borkash, which bordered the Quizmia, Quizmid Empire a Muslim state that reached the Caspian Sea to the west and Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea to the south. Quizmian Empire In the early 13th century, the Khwarezmian dynasty was governed by Shalabama Adin Muhammad. Genghis Khan saw the potential advantage in Quizmia as a commercial trading partner using the Silk Road, and he initially sent a 500-man caravan to establish official trade ties with the empire. However, in Ilkhuk, the governor of the Quizmian city of Otra, attacked the caravan that came from Mongolia, claiming that the caravan contained spies and therefore was a conspiracy against Quizmia. The situation became further complicated because the governor later refused to make repayments for the looting of the caravans and handing over the perpetrators. Genghis Khan then sent again a second group of three ambassadors, two Mongols and a Muslim. To meet the Shah himself instead of the governor in Lukhuk. The Shah had all the men shaved and the Muslim beheaded and sent his head back with the two remaining ambassadors. This was seen as an affront and insult to Genghis Khan. Outraged, Genghis Khan planned one of his largest invasion campaigns by organizing together around 100,000 soldiers, 10 Tumans, his most capable generals, and some of his sons. He left a commander and number of troops in China designated his successors to be his family members and likely appointed a Jedi to be his immediate successor and then went out to Quizmia. The Mongol army under Genghis Khan, generals and his sons crossed the Shanshan Mountains by entering the area controlled by the Quizmian Empire. After compiling intelligence from many sources Genghis Khan carefully prepared his army, which was divided into three groups. His son Jockey led the first division into the northeast of Quizmia. The second division under GB marched secretly to the southeast part of Quazimia to form, with the first division, a pincer attack on Samarkand. The third division under Genghis Khan and Tului marched to the northwest and attacked Quazimia from that direction. The Shah's army was split by diverse internecine feuds and by the Shah's decision to divide his army into small groups concentrated in various cities. This fragmentation was decisive in Quizmia's defeats, as it allowed the Mongols, although exhausted from the long journey, to immediately set about defeating small fractions of the Khwarezmi forces instead of facing a unified defense. The Mongol army quickly seized the town of Otra, relying on superior strategy and tactics. Genghis Khan ordered the wholesale massacre of many of the civilians, enslaved the rest of the population and executed in Lkhuk by pouring molten silver into his ears and eyes, as retribution for his actions. Near the end of the battle the Shah fled rather than surrender. Genghis Khan ordered Sabuta and Jibi to hunt him down, giving them 20,000 men in two years to do this. The Shah died under mysterious circumstances on a small island within his empire. The Mongols' conquest, even by their own standards, was brutal. After the capital Samarkand fell, 
the capital was moved to Bukhara by the remaining men, while Genghis Khan ordered two of his generals and their forces to completely destroy the remnants of the Khwarezmid Empire, including not only royal buildings, but entire towns, populations, and even vast swaths of farmland. According to legend, Genghis Khan even went so far as to divert a river through the Khwarezmid Emperor's birthplace, erasing it from the map. The Mongols attacked Samarkand using captured enemies as body shields. After several days only a few remaining soldiers, die-hard supporters of the Shah, held out in the citadel. After the fortress fell, Genghis supposedly reneged on his surrender terms and executed every soldier that had taken arms against him at Samarkand. The people of Samarkand were ordered to evacuate and assemble in a plain outside the city, where they were killed and pyramids of severed heads raised as a symbol of victory. At Amalik Juvani, a high official in the service of the Mongol Empire, wrote that in Termas, on the Exus, all the people, both men and women, were driven out onto the plain and divided in accordance with their usual custom, then they were all slain. The city of Bukhara was not heavily fortified, with a moat and a single wall, and the citadel typical of Khwarezmi cities. The city leaders opened the gates to the Mongols, though a unit of Turkish defenders held the city's citadel for another twelve days. Survivors from the citadel were executed, artisans and craftsmen were sent back to Mongolia. Young men who had not fought were drafted into the Mongolian army and the rest of the population was sent into slavery. As the Mongol soldiers looted the city, a fire broke out, raising most of the city to the ground. Genghis Khan had the city's surviving population assemble in the main mosque of the town, where he declared that he was the flail of God, sent to punish them for their sins. Meanwhile, the wealthy trading city of Urgench was still in the hands of Khwarezmian forces. The assault on Urgench proved to be the most difficult battle of the Mongol invasion and the city fell only after the defenders put up a stout defense, fighting block for block. Mongolian casualties were higher than normal, due to the unaccustomed difficulty of adapting Mongolian tactics to city fighting. As usual, the artisans were sent back to Mongolia. Young women and children were given to the Mongol soldiers as slaves, and the rest of the population was massacred. The Persian scholar Juvani states that 50,000 Mongol soldiers were given the task of executing 24 urgent citizens each, which would mean that 1.2 million people were killed. The sacking of Urgench is considered one of the bloodiest massacres in human history. In the meantime, Genghis Khan selected his third son Ajidai as his successor before his army set out, and specified that subsequent Khans should be his direct descendants. Genghis Khan also left Mukli, one of his most trusted generals, as the supreme commander of all Mongol forces in Jin China while he was out battling the Khwarezmid Empire to the west. After the defeat of the Khwarezmian Empire in 1220, Genghis Khan gathered his forces in Persia and Armenia to return to the Mongolian steppes. Under the suggestion of Subutai, the Mongol army was split into two forces. Genghis Khan led the main army on a raid through Afghanistan and northern India towards Mongolia, while another 20,000, two Tuman, contingent marched through the Caucasus and into Russia under generals Jibi and Subutai. They pushed deep into Armenia and Azerbaijan. The Mongols destroyed the Kingdom of Georgia, sacked the Genoese trade fortress of Kaffa in Crimea and overwintered near the Black Sea. Heading home, Subutai's forces attacked the allied forces of the Kuman Kipchaks and the poorly coordinated 80,000 Kyvaneris troops led by Mstislav the Bold of Halic and Mstislav III of Kiev who went out to stop the Mongols' actions in the area. Subutai sent emissaries to the Slavic princes calling for a separate peace, but the emissaries were executed. At the Battle of Kolka River in 1223, Subutai's forces defeated the larger Kyivan force. They also may have fought against the neighboring Volga Bulgars. There is no historical record except a short account by the Arab historian Ibn al Atha, writing in Mosul some 1,100 miles away from the event. Various historical secondary sources, Morgan, Chambers, Grousset, state that the Mongols actually defeated the Bulgars. Chambers even going so far as to say that the Bulgars had made up stories to tell their, recently crushed, Russians that they had beaten the Mongols and driven them from their territory. 
The Russian princes then sued for peace. Subutai agreed but was in no mood to pardon their princes, as was customary in Mongol society for nobility. The Russian princes were given a bloodless death. Subutai had a large wooden platform constructed on which he ate his meals along with his other generals. Six Russian princes, including Mstislav III of Kiev, were put under this platform and crushed to death. The Mongols learned from captives of the abundant green pastures beyond the Bulgar territory, allowing for the planning for conquest of Hungary and Europe. Genghis Khan recalled Subutai back to Mongolia soon afterwards, and GB died on the road back to Samarkand. The famous cavalry expedition led by Subutai and GB, in which they encircled the entire Caspian Sea defeating all armies in their path, remains unparalleled to this day, and word of the Mongol triumphs began to trickle to other nations, particularly Europe. These two campaigns are generally regarded as reconnaissance campaigns that tried to get the feel of the political and cultural elements of the regions. In 1225 both divisions returned to Mongolia. These invasions added Transoxiana and Persia to an already formidable empire while destroying any resistance along the way. Later under Genghis Khan's grandson Batu and the Golden Horde, the Mongols returned to conquer Volga Bulgaria and Kyivanaris in 1237 concluding the campaign in 1240. Western Xia and Jin Dynasty The vassal emperor of the Tangs, Western Xia, had earlier refused to take part in the Mongol war against the Khwarezmad Empire. Western Xia and the defeated Jin Dynasty formed a coalition to resist the Mongols, counting on the campaign against the Khwarezmians to preclude the Mongols from responding effectively. In 1226, immediately after returning from the west, Genghis Khan began a retaliatory attack on the Tangts. His armies quickly took Hajui, Gansu, and Suzu, not the Susa in Jiangsu province, and in the autumn he took Xiliang Fu disambiguation needed. One of the Tangut generals challenged the Mongols to a battle near Helenshine but was defeated. In November, Genghis laid siege to the Tangut city Lingzu and crossed the Yellow River, defeating the Tangut relief army. According to legend, it was here that Genghis Khan reportedly saw a line of five stars arranged in the sky and interpreted it as an omen of his victory. In 1227, Genghis Khan's army attacked and destroyed the Tangut capital of Ninghia and continued to advance, seizing Linxiaofu, Xining province, Xindufu, and Deshan province in quick succession in the spring. At Deshan, the Tangut general Ma Jianlong put up a fierce resistance for several days and personally led charges against the invaders outside the city gate. Ma Jianlong later died from wounds received from arrows in battle. Genghis Khan, after conquering Deshan, went to Lupanshan, King Shui County, Gansu Province, to escape the severe summer. The new Tangut emperor quickly surrendered to the Mongols and the rest of the Tangts officially surrendered soon after. Not happy with their betrayal and resistance, Genghis Khan ordered the entire imperial family to be executed, effectively ending the Tangut lineage. Succession The succession of Genghis Khan was already a significant topic during the later years of his reign, as he reached old age. The long-running paternity discussion about Genghis' oldest son Jockey was particularly contentious because of the seniority of Jockey among the brothers. According to traditional historical accounts, the issue over Jockey's paternity was voiced most strongly by Shikatai. In the secret history of the Mongols, just before the invasion of the Khwarezmad Empire by Genghis Khan, Shigatai declared before his father and brothers that he would never accept Jockey as Genghis Khan's successor. In response to this tension, 30, and possibly for other reasons, Ajidai was appointed as successor. Ajidai, Ajidai Khan, born Ajidai, c. 1186, the 11th of December 1241, was the third son of Genghis Khan and second great Khan, Khagan of the Mongol Empire. He continued the expansion that his father had begun and was a world figure when the Mongol Empire reached its farthest extent west and south during the invasions of Europe and Asia. Jockey Genghis Khan was aware of the friction between his sons, particularly between Shigatai and Jockey, and worried of possible conflict between them if he died. He therefore decided to divide his empire among his sons and make all of them Khan in their own right. 
while appointing one of his sons as his successor. Shigatai was considered unstable due to his temper and rash behavior, because of statements he made that he would not follow Jockey if he were to become his father's successor. To Louis, Genghis Khan's youngest son, was not to be his successor because he was the youngest and in the Mongol culture, youngest sons were not given much responsibility due to their age. If Jockey were to become successor, it was likely that Shigatai would engage in warfare with him and collapse the empire. Therefore Genghis Khan decided to give the throne to Ajidai. Ajidai was seen by Genghis Khan as dependable in character and relatively stable and down to earth and would be a neutral candidate and might defuse the situation between his brothers. Jockey died in 1226, during his father's lifetime. Some scholars, notably Rachnevsky, have commented on the possibility that Jockey was secretly poisoned by an order from Genghis Khan. Rashid al-Din reports that the great Khan sent for his sons in the spring of 1223, and while his brothers heeded the order, Jockey remained in Khorasan. Jazjani suggests that the disagreement arose from a quarrel between Jockey and his brothers in the siege of Urgench. Jockey had attempted to protect Urgench from destruction as it belonged to Derrick reallocated to him as a fief. He concludes his story with a clearly apocryphal statement by a jockey, Genghis Khan is mad to have massacred so many people and laid waste so many lands. I would be doing a service if I killed my father when he is hunting, made an alliance with Sultan Muhammad, brought this land to life and gave assistance and support to the Muslims. Jazjani claims that it was in response to hearing of these plans that Genghis Khan ordered his son secretly poisoned, however, as Sultan Muhammad was already dead in 1223, the accuracy of this story is questionable. In August 1227, during the fall of Yinquin, the capital of Western Xia, Genghis Khan died. The exact cause of his death remains a mystery and is variously attributed to being killed in action against the Western Xia, illness, falling from his horse, or wounds sustained in hunting or battle. According to the secret history of Mongols Genghis Khan fell from his horse while hunting and died because of the injury. He was already old and tired from his journeys. The Galician Volinian Chronicle alleges he was killed by the Western Xia in battle while Marco Polo wrote that he died after the infection of a narrow wound he received during his final campaign. Later Mongol chronicles connect Genghis' death with a Western Xia princess taken as war booty. One chronicle from the early 17th century even relates the legend that the princess hid a small dagger and stabbed him, though some Mongol authors have doubted this version and suspected it to be an invention by the rival Irads. Years before his death, Genghis Khan asked to be buried without markings, according to the customs of his tribe. After he died, his body was returned to Mongolia and presumably to his birthplace in Kantiyamag, where many assume he is buried somewhere close to the Onan River and the Burkhan Khaldun Mountain, part of the Kantiyai mountain range. According to legend, the funeral escort killed anyone and anything across their path to conceal where he was finally buried. The Genghis Khan Mausoleum constructed many years after his death, is his memorial, but not his burial site. The Genghis Khan Mausoleum in the town of Ejin Horachi, Inner Mongolia, China. In 1939 Chinese nationalist soldiers took the mausoleum from its position at the Lord's Enclosure, Mongolian, Edson Karu, in Mongolia to protect it from Japanese troops. It was taken through communist-held territory in Yan'an some 900 kilometers on carts to safety at a Buddhist monastery, the Dongshan de Fodian, where it remained for 10 years. In 1949, as communist troops advanced, the nationalist soldiers moved it another 200 kilometers further west to the famous Tibetan monastery of Kumbum Monastery or Tashi near Xining which soon fell under communist control. In early 1954, Genghis Khan's beer and relics were returned to the Lord's enclosure in Mongolia. By 1956 a new temple was erected there to house them. In 1968 during the Cultural Revolution, Red Guards destroyed almost everything of value. The relics were remade in the 1970s and a great marble statue of Genghis was completed in 1989. On October 6, 2004, a joint Japanese-Mongolian archaeological dig uncovered what is believed to be Genghis Khan's palace in rural Mongolia, 
which raises the possibility of actually locating the ruler's long-lost burial site. Folklore says that a river was diverted over his grave to make it impossible to find, the same manner of burial as the Sumerian king Gilgamesh of Uruk and Attila the Hun. Other tales state that his grave was stampeded over by many horses, and that trees were then planted over the site and the permafrost also did its part in hiding the burial site. Genghis Khan left behind an army of more than 129,000 men, 28,000 were given to his various brothers and his sons. To Louis, his youngest son, inherited more than 100,000 men. This force contained the bulk of the elite Mongolian cavalry. By tradition, the youngest son inherits his father's property. Jockey, Shigatai, Ajidai Khan and Kulan son Jalijian received armies of 4,000 men each. His mother and the descendants of his three brothers received 3,000 men each. The Mongol Empire was governed by a civilian and military code, called the Yasa, created by Genghis Khan. The Mongol Empire did not emphasize the importance of ethnicity and race in the administrative realm, instead adopting an approach grounded in meritocracy. The exception was the role of Genghis Khan and his family. The Mongol Empire was one of the most ethnically and culturally diverse empires in history, as befitted its size. Many of the empire's nomadic inhabitants considered themselves Mongols in military and civilian life, including Mongols, Turks and others and included many diverse kinds of various ethnicities as part of the Mongol Empire such as Muhammad Khan. There were tax exemptions for religious figures and, to some extent, teachers and doctors. The Mongol Empire practiced religious tolerance because Mongol tradition had long held that religion was a personal concept, and not subject to law or interference. Citation needed, sometime before the rise of Genghis Khan, on Khan, his mentor and eventual rival, had converted to Nestorian Christianity. Various Mongol tribes were shamanist, Buddhist or Christian. Religious tolerance was thus a well-established concept on the Asian steppe. Modern Mongolian historians say that towards the end of his life, Genghis Khan attempted to create a civil state under the Great Yasa that would have established the legal equality of all individuals, including women. However, there is no evidence of this or of the lifting of discriminatory policies towards sedentary peoples such as the Chinese. Women played a relatively important role in Mongol Empire and in family, for example Torijin Katan was briefly in charge of the Mongol Empire when next male Khagan was being chosen. Modern scholars refer to the alleged policy of encouraging trade and communication as the Pax Mongolica. Mongol peace. Genghis Khan realized that he needed people who could govern cities and states conquered by him. He also realized that such administrators could not be found among his Mongol people because they were nomads and thus had no experience governing cities. For this purpose Genghis Khan invited a Khitan prince, Chutsai, who worked for the Jin and had been captured by the Mongol army after the Jin dynasty was defeated. Jin had captured power by displacing Khitan. Genghis told Chutsai, who was a lineal descendant of Khitan rulers, that he had avenged Chutsai's forefathers. Chutsai responded that his father served the Jin dynasty honestly and so did he, also he did not consider his own father his enemy, so the question of revenge did not apply. This reply impressed Genghis Khan. Chutsai administered parts of the Mongol Empire and became a confidant of the successive Mongol Khans. Military Genghis Khan put absolute trust in his generals, such as Mukli. Gibi and Subutai, and regarded them as close advisors, often extending them the same privileges and trust normally reserved for close family members. He allowed them to make decisions on their own when they embarked on campaigns far from the Mongol Empire capital Karakoram. Genghis Khan expected unwavering loyalty from his generals, and granted them a great deal of autonomy in making command decisions. Mukli, a trusted general was given command of the Mongol forces against the Jin dynasty. While Genghis Khan was fighting in Central Asia, and Subutai and Gibi were allowed to pursue the great trade into the Caucasus and Kyvaneris, an idea they had presented to the Khagan on their own initiative. The Mongol military was also successful in siege warfare, cutting off resources for cities and towns by diverting certain rivers, taking enemy prisoners and driving them in front of the army and adopting new ideas, techniques and tools from the people they conquered, 
particularly in employing Muslim and Chinese siege engines and engineers to aid the Mongol cavalry in capturing cities. Another standard tactic of the Mongol military was the commonly practiced feigned retreat to break enemy formations and to lure small enemy groups away from the larger group and defended position for ambush and counterattack. Another important aspect of the military organization of Genghis Khan was the communications and supply route or YAM adapted from previous Chinese models. Genghis Khan dedicated special attention to this in order to speed up the gathering of military intelligence and official communications. To this end, Yamwei stations were established all over the empire. Khanates. Several years before his death, Genghis Khan divided his empire among his sons Ajidai, Shigatai, Tolui, and Joki. Jockey's death several months before Genghis Khan meant that his lands were instead split between his sons, Batu and Dorda, into several Khanates designed as sub-territories. Their Khans were expected to follow the Great Khan, who was, initially, a Jedi. Modern-day location of capital Krakhorum, following other Khanates the way Genghis Khan assigned them, Empire of the Great Khan, a Jedi Khan, as Great Khan, took most of Eastern Asia, including China. This territory later to comprise the Yuan dynasty under Kublai Khan. Mongol homeland, present-day Mongolia, including Karakoram, Tului Khan, being the youngest son, received a small territory near the Mongol homeland, following Mongol custom. Shigatai Khanate, Shigatai Khan, Genghis Khan's second son, was given Central Asia and Northern Iran. Blue Horde to Bata Khan, and White Horde to Order Khan. Both were later combined into the Kipchak Khanate, or Khanate of the Golden Horde, under Tukhtamish. Genghis Khan's eldest son, Jockey, had received most of the distant Russia and Ruthenia. Because Jockey died before Genghis Khan, his territory was further split up between his sons. Bata Khan launched an invasion of Russia, and later Hungary and Poland, and crushed several armies before being summoned back by the news of Ajidai's death. Contrary to popular belief, Genghis Khan did not conquer all of the areas of the Mongol Empire. At the time of his death, the Mongol Empire stretched from the Caspian Sea to the Sea of Japan. The empire's expansion continued for a generation or more after Genghis's death in 1227. Under Genghis's successor Ajidai Khan the speed of expansion reached its peak. Mongol armies pushed into Persia, finished off the western Xia and the remnants of the Quismids and came into conflict with the Imperial Song Dynasty of China, starting a war that lasted until 1279 and that concluded with the Mongols gaining control of all of China. They also pushed further into Russia and Eastern Europe. Perceptions Like other notable conquerors, Genghis Khan is portrayed differently by those he conquered and those who conquered with him. Negative views of Genghis Khan persist in histories written by many cultures from different geographical regions. They often cite the cruelties and destruction brought upon by Mongol armies, not to mention the systematic slaughter of civilians in the conquered regions. Other authors cite positive aspects of Genghis Khan's conquests as well. Positive. Genghis Khan is credited with bringing the Silk Road under one cohesive political environment. This allowed increased communication and trade between the West, Middle East and Asia, thus expanding the horizons of all three cultural areas. Some historians have noted that Genghis Khan instituted certain levels of meritocracy in his rule was tolerant of religions and explained his policies clearly to all his soldiers. In Turkey, Genghis Khan is looked on as a great military leader, and it is popular for male children to carry his title as name. In Mongolia, traditionally Genghis Khan had been revered for centuries among the Mongols and among certain other ethnic groups such as the Turks, largely because of his association with Mongol statehood, political and military organization and his historic victories in war. He eventually evolved into a larger-than-life figure chiefly among the Mongols and is still considered the symbol of Mongolian culture. During the communist period, Genghis Khan was often described as a reactionary, and positive statements about him were generally avoided. In 1962, the erection of a monument at his birthplace and a conference held in commemoration of his 800th birthday led to criticism from the Soviet Union and resulted in the dismissal of Tamroka, a secretary of the ruling Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party Central Committee. Portrait on a hillside in Alambata, 
2006. In the early 1990s the memory of Genghis Khan with the Mongolian national identity has had a powerful revival partly because of his perception during the Mongolian People's Republic period. Genghis Khan became one of the central figures of the national identity. He is looked upon positively by Mongolians for his role in uniting warring tribes. For example, it is not uncommon for Mongolians to refer to their country as Genghis Khan's Mongolia, to themselves as Genghis Khan's children, and to Genghis Khan as the father of the Mongols especially among the younger generation. However, there is a chasm in the perception of his brutality. Mongolians maintain that the historical records written by non-Mongolians are unfairly biased against Genghis Khan and that his butchery is exaggerated while his positive role is underrated. In Mongolia today, Genghis Khan's name and likeness are endorsed on products, streets, buildings, and other places. His face can be found on everyday commodities, from liquor bottles to candy products, and on the largest denominations of 500, 1000, 5000, 10,000, and 20,000 Mongolian Togrog. Mongolia's main international airport in Ulaanbaatar is named Chinggis Khan International Airport. Major Genghis Khan statues have been erected before the parliament and near Ulaanbaatar. There have been repeated discussions about regulating the use of his name and image to avoid trivialization. Genghis Khan is regarded as one of the prominent leaders in Mongolia's history. He is responsible for the emergence of the Mongols as a political and ethnic identity because there was no unified identity between the tribes that had cultural similarity. He reinforced many Mongol traditions and provided stability and unity during a time of almost endemic warfare between tribes. He is also given credit for the introduction of the traditional Mongolian script and the creation of the Iksasag, Great Administration, the first written Mongolian law. Iksasag law adopted during Genghis Khan's time in Mongolia had points to punish illegal matters related to corruption and bribery very heavily. Mongolian President Sakagian El Begdorj noted, President El Begdorj sees Genghis Khan as a leader from whom to learn for anti-corruption efforts as Genghis Khan sought equal protection under the law for all citizens regardless of status or wealth. Chinggis, Genghis Khan dot 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 was a man who deeply realized that the justice begins and consolidates with the equality of law and not with the distinctions between people. He was a man who knew that the good laws and rules lived longer than fancy palaces, El Begdorj said in his speech on the 850th anniversary of Chinggis Khan's birth. In summary, Mongolians see him as the fundamental figure in the founding of the Mongol Empire and therefore the basis for Mongolia as a country. From 2012, Mongolia will celebrate Chinggis Khan's birthday as a national holiday on the first day of winter according to the Mongolian lunar calendar, not to be confused with the Asian New Year. Mixed. There are conflicting views of Genghis Khan in the People's Republic of China with some viewing him positively in the Inner Mongolia region where there is a monument and buildings about him and where there is a considerable number of Mongols in the area with a population of around 5 million, almost twice the population of Mongolia, while Genghis Khan never conquered all of China. His grandson Kublai Khan completed that conquest and established the Yuan dynasty that is often credited with reuniting China. There has been much artwork and literature praising Genghis as a great military leader and political genius. The years of the Mongol established Yuan dynasty left an indelible imprint on Chinese political and social structures for subsequent generations with literature during the Jin dynasty relatively fewer. In general the legacy of Genghis Khan and his successors who completed the conquest of China after 65 years of struggle, remains a mixed topic. China suffered a drastic decline in population. The population of North China decreased from 50 million in the 1195 census to 8.5 million in the Mongol census of 1235 to 36. An unknown number of people migrated to southern China in this period. Genghis Khan supported the Chinese Taoist sect leader Kuchuji and after personally meeting him in what is now Afghanistan gave him control of all religious affairs in northern China. Negative. In the Middle East and Iran, 
he is almost universally looked on as a destructive and genocidal warlord who caused enormous damage and destruction to the population of these areas. Stephen R. Ward wrote that overall, the Mongol violence and depredations killed up to three-fourths of the population of the Iranian plateau possibly 10 to 15 million people. Some historians have estimated that Iran's population did not again reach its pre-Mongol levels until the mid-20th century. Similarly, in Afghanistan, along with other non-Turkic Muslim countries, he is generally viewed unfavorably though some groups display ambivalence as it is believed that the Hazara of Afghanistan are descendants of a large Mongol garrison stationed therein. The invasions of Baghdad, Samarkand. Urgent, Kiev, Vladimir among others caused mass murders, such as when portions of southern Khuzestan were completely destroyed. His descendant Hulagu Khan destroyed much of Iran's northern part and sacked Baghdad although his forces were halted by the Mamluks of Egypt, but Hulagu's descendant Ghazan Khan would return to beat the Egyptian Mamluks right out of Levant. Palestine and even Gaza. According to the works of the Persian historian Rashid al-Din Hamadani, the Mongols killed more than 70,000 people in Merv and more than 190,000 in Nishapur. In 1237 Bata Khan, a grandson of Genghis Khan, launched an invasion into Kyvnrus. Over the course of three years, the Mongols destroyed and annihilated all of the major cities of Eastern Europe with the exceptions of Novgorod and Skov. Giovanni de Plano Carpini, the Pope's envoy to the Mongol Great Khan traveled through Kiev in February 1246 and wrote, They, the Mongols, attacked Russia, where they made great havoc, destroying cities and fortresses and slaughtering men, and they laid siege to Kiev, the capital of Russia, after they had besieged the city for a long time, they took it and put the inhabitants to death. When we were journeying through that land we came across countless skulls and bones of dead men lying about on the ground. Kiev had been a very large and thickly populated town, but now it has been reduced almost to nothing, for there are at the present time scarce 200 houses there and the inhabitants are kept in complete slavery. The Mongol invasion of Hungary, the dismounted Mongols, with captured women, are on the left. The Hungarians, with one saved woman, on the right, among the Iranian peoples, Genghis Khan is regarded along with Hulagu and Timur as one of the most despised conquerors in the region. Although the famous Mughal emperors were proud descendants of Genghis Khan and particularly Timur, they clearly distanced themselves from the Mongol atrocities committed against the Khwarezm Shahs, Turks, Persians, the citizens of Baghdad and Damascus, Nishapur. Bukhara and historical figures such as Atta of Nishapur and many other notable Muslims. However, Mughal emperors directly patronized the legacies of Genghis Khan and Timur. Together their names were synonymous with the names of other distinguished personalities particularly among the Muslim populations of South Asia. In much of Russia, Middle East, Korea, China, Ukraine, Poland and Hungary, Genghis Khan and his regime are credited with considerable damage destruction and loss or population descent in addition to most of the mongol nobility up to the 20th century the mughal emperor babur's mother was a descendant timur also known as tamerlane the 14th century military leader and many other nobilities of central asian countries claimed descent from genghis khan during the soviet purge most of the mongol nobility in mongolia were purged Physical appearance The closest depiction generally accepted by most historians is the portrait currently in the National Palace Museum in Taipei, Taiwan which was drawn under the supervision of his grandson Kublai during the Mongol Yuan dynasty and depicts Genghis Khan with typical Mongol features. There are many theories about the origins of Temujin's title. Since people of the Mongol nation later associated the name with Qing, Mongolian for strength, such confusion is obvious though it does not follow etymology. The Gate of Genghis Khan Mausoleum One theory suggests the name stems from a palatalized version of the Mongolian and Turkic word Tengis, meaning ocean, oceanic or widespreading. Lake Baikland Ocean were called Tengis by the Mongols. However, it seems that if they had meant to call Genghis Tengis they could have said, and written, Tengis Khan, which they did not. Zheng, Chinese, comma meaning right, just, or true would have received the Mongolian adjectival modifier s, creating Genghis, 
which in medieval romanization would be written Genghis. It is likely that the 13th century Mongolian pronunciation would have closely matched Chinggis. The English spelling Genghis is of unclear origin. Weatherford claims it derives from a spelling used in original Persian reports. Even at this time some Iranians pronounce his name as Genghis. However, review of historical Persian sources does not confirm this. According to the secret history of the Mongols, Temujin was named after a powerful warrior of the Tatar tribe that his father Yesergai had taken prisoner. The name Temujin is believed to derive from the word Tema meaning iron, modern Mongolian, Komotama. The name would imply a blacksmith or a man strong like iron. No evidence has survived to indicate that Genghis Khan had any exceptional training or reputation as a blacksmith. But the latter interpretation, a man strong like iron, is supported by the names of Genghis Khan's siblings, Temulin and Temurj, which are derived from the same root word.